I think the Scottish Government's adoption of a passive house equivalent is brilliant. I think it's something that we can be immensely proud of in Scotland. Okay, so if I had to think about what I liked about passive house, um, I feel like everything. But for us as architects, it makes us think harder and work harder to design better buildings. From a landlord perspective, it's important because it means that we are getting good quality homes that are easy to maintain and will stand the test of time. It's a comfort standard which guarantees really good air quality and temperatures for the users of the building. Secondly, it's an energy standard. It does that for the lowest possible energy. But what really makes it different from all other standards is it has a quality assurance process, a certification that guarantees the design meets the standard and the construction then meets that standard and it's based on the evidence of 30 years of monitoring and how buildings really work. It's well Kent, you know, it's, it's not rocket science in terms of what you're doing here, so, and I think because of that, that gave people the confidence to move forward on a wider scale. There is a lot of anecdotal benefits or, that were reported back to us at the Trust about residents reporting less use of inhalers, um, reduced uh, instances of eczema. At a time when Scotland, like so many other countries, is grappling with the climate emergency and the cost of living crisis, this is clearly a very high priority. So it's about resident and occupant health and well-being, it's about reducing fuel poverty. A really good example of how you can really make things happen is the Scottish Futures Trust metric to require schools to be built to a certain energy standard in kilowatt hours per square inch per year, linked to funding over 25 years. So Passive House became the way that could guarantee local authorities would meet that standard and receive their funding. And so overnight, we went from no passive house schools in Scotland to now nearly 30 under design, under construction, and the first one completed. The Dunfermline Land Campus at this size is the biggest passive house project currently in the UK, and probably one of the biggest in the world. And we have studies now that genuinely show the attainment of children in passive house buildings is higher. So since March 2021, when we launched Low Carbon Learning, which was to upskill and reskill people in passive house standards and fabric first and the fabric first approach, we've upskilled over 3,000 people. What we found with our supply chain and subcontractors is, is they fully understand that this is the way the industry is moving as well. So they are they're very rapidly adapting, like like we are as a company, because they can see this is the way the industry is going. We see that. The industry is gearing up. There are going to be some teething problems with this. We need to see this as a long-term future for Scotland. This is setting a new standard that we need to work towards. So of course there's going to be challenges that people are going to bring when you bring forward any change to regulation. And I think what makes this step unique and special and something that we have to commit to is that it's not just about changing a number in our regulations, it's about changing a mindset of a construction industry and that's exciting and it's a real opportunity to get quality really embedded into how we deliver buildings.